Hi, this is Amina Sheikh here. With me today, I have an actress who is not an abla nari but sapper bhari, and her eyes speak volumes than her words. Welcoming Sarah Jean Dias on Zoom Channel. That's one heck of an introduction. Thank you. I must say that basically, you're actually not the abla nari, and you're proving your friends wrong. You're proving the entire people out there, like you know, okay, this is the kind of you know modern woman we would like to watch in Made in Heaven too. So, how was it like working on this one for you? Um. It, it was a dream come true, really. I was very overwhelmed when I found out that. I sh so Nandini Shrikant called me, Nandini Shrikant, the casting director, and she said, "So there's a role in made in and heaven." Bolne ki pehle maine haa diya. And she's like, "Don't you want to know what the role is?" I said, "Nay, I just want to do it." Uh -huh. um, and then she told me that Zoya is directing it. Then she said, "It's the finale episode." And then she said, "Come meet Zoya." So I was like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" So then I went and met Zoya, and Zoya's like, "Yeah, so you're playing a bride." I was like. What? <laughs> and you're marrying yourself. I was like, what? Wait, what now? So I was very happy, obviously, and and excited and nervous and all of these things. And when 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 you actually started working for it and you know dressing in a bride lehenga, wearing that outfit, how did you feel? I actually am a Catholic bride, so I wear a, it's a white. So wedding. when you're wearing the the bridal outfit, yeah, it for was that matter, it was yeah. absolutely. It's I saw actually emotional. your pictures. Yeah, you're wearing that. You know that white. white I've not yeah. seen the show yet. Oh, you must! I, it's a, it's I am it's going a, it's to good, watch it. It's not just because I'm in it, but also mm. because I'm in it. But it's mm. it's a really good show in general. So there's two seasons. Um, mm. Each and every storyline and actor, and I keep saying this over and over again. Arjun Mathur is just magnificent as Karan. So we've just done such a good job. I've done the first. I've seen the first season. Season two is like one, I have to see like for sure. Out of the, I mean, hearing out of the water. so much about it, and you know, I was like, oh, there are a lot of good characters over here. Now. I mean, like you know, it's it's only seven episodes, and I got to the finale episode, which was my episode, and I was like, 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 Um, but to answer your question, um, to put on the white dress and get married, I'm not married in real life, so it's very emotional because it's something that I want for myself. So it was very emotional, and um, you know, especially when you're walking down the aisle, um, you traditionally uh, Catholics get walked down the aisle. They get given away by the father, and I lost my father a few years ago, so it was very emotional for me. And You know, obviously you're playing a part, and you know that who the audience is, that they are fake friends, because you know they're. The audience, but you have to believe when you're there. So it was very hard for me. It was really very hard. And then on top of that, the groom is left, or whatever you've told him to go. And then you give this monologue in a wedding dress. So it was just amazing. Really. And when we talk about monologue, have you seen Karthik Aryan's monologue? And were you inspired by Not any yet. way? <laughs> Not yet. I haven't. But you're the first person to ask me this question. Yes. So no, I haven't. You haven't, like, no. because monologue. Whenever we talk about monologue, we really have that person in head because that became viral ever since he started off. You know, really? With the, yeah, Pyar ka panchnama and all like that. So I was like, chalo, let me ask you on that. No, I haven't. I actually haven't seen Karthik's um, monologue. My inspiration from this really came just from what Zoya wanted. I didn't really rely on anything or anyone else or watch anything else. I sometimes do that for inspiration, but Zoya was very clear um, in her instructions to me. So that's all I really needed um, for the monologue. And then when I was saying the words, I realized that there are things I believe in as well. So that became its own inspiration. Yeah. But as you were in the real wedding, were you manifesting to actually like you know have something like this? Of course not. What the twist is in the real life wedding? I'm sure that is not what you would expect. Not even the wedding. drunk proposal. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I. You know. I'm. 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 I'm quite cliched like that. I want a typical wedding. Like I want a white wedding, and I want to walk down the aisle, and I want bridesmaids, and you know. Um, I love the idea of an outdoor wedding. Uh, I've always wanted an outdoor wedding. Um, I used to think I wanted on a beach, uh, maybe in like a Tuscan vineyard, or um, I think there was some not conscious but subconscious manifesting to hold it. How I say. But but ever in your life, have you been through a phase where you know where you were on that role that you know, listen, I'm getting married, or and then you have felt like no, you know. Sometimes what happens, like I'll be very honest to you, in current culture. People feel that need of getting married, but want to escape because there is a situation ship. There is different kind of you know relationships which is taking place currently, where people are not able to make minds whether this is required or we should just continue as couples for that matter. So yeah, were you has ever, that happened to me? Yes, no. ever. No. I'm, I've always been very clear that I want the quintessential. 
And I've always been clear with whoever it is that I'm with also that I want this as a quintessential outcome of my relationship. And if that's not on offer, then this is not going to work, right? Um, I do empathize and, and understand with um, what young people these days want from relationships. Not just young people, just people, right? Because societal... Society has changed and then gender roles have changed so much as well. So I understand that it can be uh, tricky and sometimes also... I'm very blessed. I don't come from a house where I'm forced to be married. But when you're forced to be married, like it used to be and still is sometimes, you can sometimes want something else for yourself and that might not involve being married. That might involve being in a live-in relationship for the rest of your life. Um, so I think that it really... What it boils down to is what do you want, which is what the monologue is about, right? It's what is what makes you happy. And then you go out and find that. Um, because at the end of the day, it's your marriage. It's between two people. It yes. doesn't matter what your friends, your your family, your um, what society wants, what Instagram wants. It really matters what you want. And even like when, when it comes to relationships, like it's it's been said, you know, often, you know, often we hear this for years now that too many cooks Spoil the broth. Spoil the broth. And, you know, it's like that, you know, the relationship is between two people for that matter. Too many seven second Instagram reels spoil the broth, mate. <laughs> There's so many Instagram reels out there telling you how relationships should look. What exactly. They, you know, if it's not like this, it's not good. And as we talk about social media, do you also feel there is too much of to be in yes. a certain manner? I'm that, already you know, saying yes. Yeah, right. Yes. Don't you feel like it's yes. like customing you, you know, yes. customizing you in a certain manner that, listen, this is what I want you to be. Yes. Instagram is just making <laughs> you like that. Like I can't say yes anymore. Like, I can't be clumsy. I can't be because, no, my Instagram reel needs to be in a certain manner only. I can't be like, you know, what I am. I have to act like, oh my God, you know, I'm so such a cool person, you know. Do also, you the, the, yeah, I think it goes both ways, right? So, the what, what I keep saying is that the... Instagram is an algorithm and it's a machine in that sense, right? And we are human. It's up to us to make the decision, not the other way around. The Instagram algorithm feeds off of what you are seeing. So if you're going to keep seeing certain things, then it's going to keep feeding you those things over and over again. And that's the messaging that you're putting. And even if you say before Instagram, before it ever came about, it's kind of like, you know, self-talk. Exactly. Yes. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm going to fail at this project. I'm not going to get this job. I'm not going to get the right husband. I'm not fair enough. I'm too dark. I'm too fat. I'm too thin. What is Instagram doing? It's taking all of those thoughts now and feeding it to you. Yes. Right? <laughs> because that's what, it's your internal thoughts that's now on our screen. Yes. So it's up to you, again, really, to be like, no, I don't want this. I will not speak to myself this way. And so I will not consume this kind of content. Um, I will choose what I want. And I did that for myself on my Instagram account. I was, I was, I realized that my feed was filled with, you know, initially we said, I'm not inspired. Yes, exactly. Actually, so inspired is not comparison. Yes, comparison. Inspiration is not comparison. What can I become? What can I do? You know, it's like that. Most so of the time. So, inspiration ke naam pe, hmm. it's actually comparison. And making you complex. And making you feel worse. Hmm. Even if you look at, very typically, let's say fitness, right? You will follow, like I have people who look like me, who are following people that look like, let's say, uh, Jessica Alba. Now, two different body types. You can do whatever the F you want to. You're not going to look like her, right? That's true. Or you can have somebody who looks like Beyonce, who's following an Instagram account that looks like me. It's never going to happen. So why are you setting yourself up for these... Sorry, I get very like flustered when I talk but about these But it's true things. actually. No, what you're saying is right. And you know, that is leading to a lot of mental health concerns. And you uh. know, your show talks about that. And honestly, because you know, there is this... And sometimes even I consume, you know, I leave it. I, I don't consume it much. Yeah. I have let go of social media because sometimes I feel I end up like, you know, fighting, like trying to justify why this comment is in such a tone. And yeah. why, like, I have put on, you know, my hard work over there. I yeah. have done something like that. And why this person, XYZ person is just criticized also labeling knowing yeah labeling and all you know seven second labeling seven second psychological yes. advice yes that happens seven seconds if you have this problem this is this is sort of if yeah. you have this da, 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 da. Yeah. like seven seconds and sometimes I feel like everyone is like a gyani on social media oh, now don't, yeah, please don't even I can't even I cannot even and as we speak about your show you know uh, you your, your show talks about mental health and do you feel that this counseling of you know giving to people because you know what they're expecting in reality, is, is way too different what is there on social media. You have done that, you know, when, when it came to your own show, you know, which talks about mental health, which talks about, you know, what the, the walks of life, what you go through and all that. 
so do do I think that it's do, do your show also like you know represents of yeah. you know what exactly the culture we are belonging to right now yes. and that is leading to a lot of complex characters like if you see people now are way too insecure to present themselves and all like that oh um yes. no I think people have always been the same I just think now that everything is more out there I think human beings are always have always had the same insecurities the same. Uh, mental health conditions uh, it's like with the world right people are now the climate change is right up front that but it's been happening for yes. I don't even know how long right um, if you talk about I don't know we can talk about rape on the show but anyway if you talk about like the amount of rapes that are reported people are like oh India's the rape capital I'm like uh, no it's just being reported more now that's and that's a good thing even with COVID right it was the thing to talk about everyone's got COVID da, 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 da. and now they're just not testing as much does that mean people are not getting COVID no exactly right so it's it really just comes back to sensationalization of ah trending let's talk about it let's make a big deal but what Instagram is doing now is what press and publicity used to do before right find a topic make it really big mm -hmm. make it sensationalized instill fear in people and thus control people. It's all like a, like the matrix. Yeah, exactly. You know That's I mean? true. That's comes like the matrix. But you know, as we talk about social media and when you, it's very good that you brought the same topic which I keep on pestering on is culture, yeah. you know, in the country. And it's yeah. not only in the country, but you know, time and again, I read so many stories. I mean, yesterday I read something and it was, it's very brutal, you know. Somewhere do you feel that, you know, even in Bombay, things are happening and you yeah. know Bombay used to be my safe and I will I have been born and brought up away so I feel like you know it's my safe but now so many things are happening do you sometimes feel that maybe that there is something which is not happening correctly when it comes to the system you know when it comes to when these people are actually like you know the people the, the, the ones who are doing this are not punished properly or maybe it's taken for granted or maybe because an XYZ has an XYZ connection and sometimes things just you know it's hidden in, uh, under the mat. It's Again, like that. you know, I just feel like these things have been happening. I, I don't think they're new. Um, I think that not just when it comes to I think crime in general. Um, and it's not just in our country, right? The right connections can get you out of murder. And this has been proven time and time again. From time immemorial. It's not just happening right now. Um, do I feel safe? No. Did I think Bombay used to be safer? Yes. Um, but does that mean that the system is completely wrong? No. I think that it, th 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 it's so nuanced. There's so many loopholes. There's so many layers yes. to it, right? You can't just be like, oh, the government. You can't. You can't. Be. It's yeah. so much. It's easy to point fingers. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's a one sentence answer. You know, there's, there's just a lot that goes on that you and I don't even know about. Um, and I'm not, a, I don't like blame. And I, as a person, I don't like blame. Um, some people are responsible, yes. But I don't think it's so simple. Yeah. Coming back to also talking about depression. Yes. You have been through that phase. Yeah. And how did you overcome? And whenever it comes to any obstacles in your life, how do you overcome such things? Because... That phase is something which either you get out of it or you're completely into it. And, you know, it's very difficult to get out of it. Also. I mean, there is no either. You have to get out of it. Hmm. There's no, um, there's no other way. I, I also want to be very clear. Depression is like having cancer. It's a men, it's a, it's, it's, it's an illness, right? Um, it can be hereditary as well, just like cancer. Um, or a hereditary inclination towards alcoholism or nicotine, right? It's in your blood. Um, so you're up against a lot with a mental health condition. What I'm very appreciative of, of now is that there is more conversation about it and it's actually recognized as an illness and there are actually some uh, insurance companies out there today, finally, that will give you mental health coverage as well. I also want to be clear that I was clinically diagnosed with depression and anxiety. I mera waisa hi nahi tha ki, this really irritates me. People are like, yeah, I'm very depressed too. No, you're not. Hmm. You're sad, but you're not upset. Depressed. Yeah, you can say that you're upset. You're not you just can't use a term. You can't just. Pff, yeah, I have anxiety. Do you know what that's like? It's debilitating. When I have an anxious bout, I can't breathe. Like it's awful, and because it's an illness, sometimes even though I'm happy, I will still be anxious because it's 
I don't know how to explain it. Like some, like when a healthy person suddenly gets cancer, it's like that. You have no idea where it's coming from. But to answer your question, I got out of it. Um, I got, I, I think I may have always had tendencies towards being depressed. And when I lost my father was when I, when it got really bad. And then the following year after losing him, I got diagnosed with depression and anxiety. Um, I'm not anymore clinically diagnosed with either one, but I did take medication for it uh, because it was very bad. Um, and I did uh, CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy um, with a psychologist for two years regularly and now mm. once a month or mm. once every two months because it's kind of just maintenance now. Mm. Um, and it, I cannot emphasize the importance of having a good support system, uh, even if it's one person, um, someone who you trust, you can rely on, um, join groups where you're with other people who are suffering like you are so that you, you know, someone needs to understand what you're going through. Um, again, my, 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 my favorites, my yoga, my meditation, eating healthy, sleeping well, uh, not drinking too much alcohol, not partying too hard. Um, it's a holistic healing, you know. Um, I also believe in alternative healing therapies like chakra cleansings and stuff like that because I've tried, when I got depressed, I was hell-bent on not being depressed. So I tried everything, right? I was like, I'm just gonna leave no stone unturned. Which is why when I started doing uh, mental health work with other people, it was to share my knowledge, you know, which is why I did my podcast as well, which thankfully won an award. And um, I just wanted to share that, that you are not alone and that you can get out of it. Because I did. And it's possible. So, yeah. Coming back to your acting career, mm -hmm. you have been someone who comes back, disappears, comes back. Like, what exactly were you doing? And you have done a lot of good, you know, a bunch of good films. You know, you have worked with Abhishek Bachchan. Yeah. You have worked with Vicky Kaushal. Yeah. Uh, Vicky Kaushal, in fact, like that time, we didn't even know that, you know, he existed as such, you know, yeah. as an actor. And, you know, you have done, uh, you know, Zuban with him. But you had your own, uh, you know, career, yeah. you know, destination, yeah, journey yeah, 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 for that yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that, you know, why Sarah Jean Dyer's like, I have to like literally struggle to get you. Well, you don't actually. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that I can only do the work that I get offered to do. So if there are no offers or if there are offers that don't work out for whatever reason, then there's no work, right? So for example, last year around this time, just before, in June, I did 24 auditions in one month and I didn't get any of those jobs. So what do I do? You know, like it's, it's not always in my control. Um, people always say, oh my God, you're so picky about your work. But actually then when I say, but have you thought that I have done every genre? So I'm not picky actually. Um, and it seems that way because also, even if you just take Made in Heaven, we shot for it two years ago. And I, I couldn't do anything about the fact that it took two years to come out. And that happens a lot. You shoot for something, you don't know when it's gonna release. And that's why I actually do so many other things. And I'm blessed to be gifted and talented at those things. Um, but I like to keep busy. So I don't really disappear and you don't really have to struggle to find me because if I'm not acting, then you will find me doing mental health work. If I'm not doing mental health work, I'm singing and doing live shows. If I'm not singing and doing live shows, I've done a podcast. If I've not done a podcast, I've trained to be a life coach. So you're into multi things I just, basically. I like yeah. to keep busy and busy. I like to use, you know, Multiple God's things. been kind, he's given me many gifts. I like to use them and I travel and eat. But when, when it comes to Bollywood, do you somehow feel that there is a lot of lobbying and there is a lot of struggle when it comes to cracking a good film, a good project? When I say good projects, maybe a big budget film or say, you know, something which is very good on the canvas and at the same time with a good story. Do you feel that we have worked with Kangana Ranaut, you know, and Abhishek Bachchan in game and she keeps on constantly talking about these battles. Sometimes she, of course, like, you know, she has her own takes on things, but sometimes she says that, you know, Bollywood is way too different to function with, you know, there is so much happening. Do you feel that that happens? It's a hard industry, uh, our industry in general. Um, I remember, because I used to go to LA quite a bit as well for auditions and stuff, it's hard. It's really, really hard. It's very competitive. There's a 99% chance, uh, chance of failure rather than success. So the odds are so against you, but people still want to do it. Um, but I... I, 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 it's not that I'm saying that I thought it was easy and I didn't face any challenges and it was just smooth sailing. I do agree with a lot of the stuff that someone like a Kangana would say. But I also try to look at things 
maybe more positively and just try to understand that life is hard and if you're very ambitious and you want bigger things then life is going to be that much harder right so it's and and it's you also have to be patient um things do work a certain way you have to pick what battles you want to fight um and you know if you are patient and you are hard working and you just stick to doing what you're good at doing i th- i i i believe that it comes around um and you know what i think that also just for yourself you need to figure okay i've done this 5 years now okay i've not gotten what i want then you really need to sit down and think do i do i still want to do this right because look at the world we live in there are opportunities falling out of people's ears there is just you can do anything today so you need to figure i understand when we started it was not the same it was very difficult right we didn't have as many choices as many opportunities there was a lot of you know you can't be too dark you have to be skinny you have to have straight hair you have to have a round jaw it was a lot right mm-hmm. i went through all of that but i and i di- i didn't want to quit quite a few times but i didn't and i just every time i said i'm not quitting i was like okay if this is the challenge i'm not going to let it defeat me and i'm not going to complain about it because complaining about it is not getting me anywhere and if i am choosing to stay then i have accepted that this is a challenge so bring it on that's just how i look at it yeah and that's that's quite a good way to look at things you don't have a choice but like. now as we say that you know there there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of things to see there's a lot of technology also where sometimes they don't need you know a certain personality they might just make a dummy out of it so you know, about AI. the ai version yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, somehow feel that that is also a threat because eventually it's a man made thing but at the same time it's leading problems for the man made people only this is a huge problem for me Yeah. this is a huge problem and i think that um i hope i know it's happening in hollywood already i really really hope that i hope i don't i even though even as i say this i can't say it properly because i don't know what's going to happen over here i find that people coming together to fight something over here is very rare um but i hope that it happens because I feel like if AI is a problem if it's mis- anything is a problem if it's misused right and I find that it is misused if you're going to take my face without my permission and put it onto something I've worked 23 years in this in this industry I the reason you can use my face is because it's worth something so you don't get to use it for free and there should be something in place to protect that from happening And that's, that's what what is not happening and because of ai that you know what is happening is they're using you know such yeah. say basically they're just trying to make a a, a clone to dipika padukone yeah. and you know basically she she may not be doing that yeah. and there are certain steps where you have to follow certain protocols and when they are using such images for you know creating you know yeah. that is which is happening a lot because yeah. of ai and which yeah. is leading to a lot of you know issues and invading privacy the yeah. privacy part of you know a person should be secluded or wanting to be in a certain manner yeah. that is disappearing a lot because of this format yeah what are and, your thoughts and, on and i also feel that look when it comes to things like the uh the dark net the dark web and um creating out of famous personalities etc <sighs> i can't believe i'm saying this but that's very hard to control right but i'm talking about what concerns me even more than that is studios knowingly using artists and getting away with it because that's why hollywood is fighting because that's where it might be going right using ai to write scripts what are the writers going to do where are they going to go they as it is don't get paid much they as it is don't get that much recognition right why are why aren't technical awards front page news why right and now you're going to put ai in place of that it's scary it's a scary time i'm just i i hope that there's a a good resolution and to me my comfort level would lie in knowing that a producer or a studio came to me and said look we're using you but we're paying you copyright royalties etc etc um i understand that it might be less because i'm not physically present fair enough um but 
I am a brand and I have value and you cannot use my value without my permission. It's like basically taking away the credits of your own hard work and it's going to that machine because it's just Just there. create a new person. Exactly. Then. It's but like no that. one's going to come and watch it because no one knows who this new person is. Yes. But but at the same time, you know, the, the, the disadvantages may be a lot because of course what we spoke about. But if you also notice, it's not helping out as such. Because eventually sometimes even those scripts might be great or something, there is someone out there who's furnishing it. You yeah. Know, there's someone who's working on it. Yeah. Yeah. working on it yeah. which is leading to more of work than actually like you know making use of that advanced technology yeah we're at a very very interesting time um, I mean I said this before COVID and during COVID as well where generally I think as a generation we've been through a lot and continue to go through things every time something calms down something else comes up yes so that's true. it's just interesting Talking about your work, coming back to your work you're also you have worked in Inside Edge and now you're set with the freelancer so yeah. tell me something about that how excited are you for this one? I'm very excited because it's action. And I love action. I love, I've always wanted to play uh, an action role. So I play a CIA officer. And it's, um, it's we shot in Tangiers. It's this fast-paced, adrenaline-pumped series. And I'm just so happy to be a part of it. Uh, I don't actually have any action, but by proxy, I feel like I might, like, you know, some of the action bits will rub up on me. But um, it's just a great project. It's Neeraj Pandey. I mean, you know, this, and Disney. So it's, it's just wonderful, honestly speaking. And I'm super excited for it. And as we talk about action, just today, Jawan trailer released. And yes. it's completely full-packed action. And yes. there are so many scenes and all. Did you like his look? Did you like Shah Rukh Khan's look? And have you seen it? Like I saw the trailer when I went to watch Barbie. Because uh -huh. it was out. No, how was it? That was, was a teaser. That was a teaser. I saw the teaser. Basically. Oh, there's a trailer out. Yeah, the I haven't seen it out. Today. Yeah. Oh, so I saw the teaser. Mm -hmm. Teaser is so long. That trailer was so long. So anyway, I was like, wow! It's amazing. He looks so hot bald. Yeah. How can he look hot even bald? Imagine. Only Shah Rukh can do this, can right? Do that, right? Only Shah Rukh can do this. I'm like, bald? I never ever thought, but he looks so good. Yeah. So, and I don't know, I love him. He's so wonderfully talented and charming and good. And I just really want the best for him. And I'm super excited about this trailer. I was, I watched the trailer and I, I was like, I want to see this movie. I really want to see this movie. You're excited for it. And so after Freelancer, do you have anything in Pipeline if you would like to talk about? I do. Um, I am playing a cop in a movie that's coming out. Uh, it's a big one, but I can't say anything else. Um, but that's also coming out. She has out. to reveal it now. <laughs> She's talking about Baby. cop. She's talking about cop movie. Now Rohit Shetty is running in my head right now at the moment. I'll tell you what, it's not Rohit Shetty. Okay. But anyway, so I play a cop. It's super fun. Like this movie is so lovely. Um, that's coming out soon. And then I have another movie coming out soon where I can't tell you anything about. Sorry. She's not revealing anything. <laughs> and I can also tell you that I signed two shows after Made in Heaven came out, which okay. I'm so happy about because Made in Heaven just came out. Um, one is a documentary and the other one is another fiction show. And that's all I can tell you. But do you prefer being more on OTT or more on, say, big screen? What, what are your preferences for that matter? Because I recently Mamali said this that OTT is just time pass and the more consumption of content and the, the glorification of content happens more on big screen, that is but what she said. people have more small screens in their hands than yes. go to the theatre. Thanks to the digital version of, yeah. you know, so phones. That's kind of a... It's quite a debatable conversation. If it's see. not debatable. People have more phones Yes, but than sometimes what happens, theaters. like maybe the box office collection is more spoken of. Definitely. Uh, rather than, you know, say maybe the timestamps what you have or say, you know, what is the... Uh, ah, the that's you know, getting very technical. Things. Yeah. Yeah. But, Okay, let's put it this way. I would not want to watch Mission Impossible on my phone, right? I want to watch it on the screen. Exactly. I, I want to watch Dune on the big screen. So there is a certain charm to it. Mm -hmm. I haven't done a film that's like that yet. Um, so maybe if I did a film like that, then yes, I would want to watch it on, I would want people to watch it on a big screen. But most of the content that I've done so far, most of the films and web series that I've done so far is, uh, I'm fine with it being on OTT. Mm -hmm. So you're more comfortable being on OTT. As long as people watch it, I don't really care. 
and as she announces about her upcoming projects but she's not revealing anything much to me it was lovely having sara jane dyers Thank on you. zoom channel but i'm here. hoping the next time i meet she's going to reveal me about everything she's doing you have to yeah you have to interview me again in a couple of months yes like i have to not like keep on searching for her she will definitely come back to me it was lovely interacting with you and thank, thank you, you so same. much for a lovely time same hi this is sarah jane dice and you are watching me on zoom